Joining me now to break down all these sentencing suggestions is criminal defense attorney out of Miami, Adam Swickle. Adam, how are you? I'm doing well, Joey. How are you? Good, good. Listen, let me just ask you, and just uh, taking a step back of, you know, before we get into the victim impact statements, I want to talk about her statement. Uh, now, I'm sure as a defense attorney, you have helped many a client prepare such statements. I don't want to say many, Adam, because that presumes your clients are guilty. <laughs> All right? I don't want to sell you short. But I'm sure in the course of representation, you, as I, have had to, you know, have a client prepare a statement. How effective do you think uh, the defendant's statement is, that's Kristen Holzman, how effective was her statement in this case? And was it actually sincere, or did it sound like, in other words, was it an apology or was it an excuse? What say you, Adam? Well, I mean, I think those are very interesting questions. The first thing I can say is, yes, I have assisted people and clients in preparing these kinds of statements. In this particular case, I don't necessarily believe that Mr. Schwartz assisted her, because if you notice in her statement, she actually kind of takes a little bit of a dig at her attorney. <laughs> a little? Saying that there was, a, okay, a lot. <laughs> I'm trying to be fair here. Uh, yes, you a, are. <laughs> a lot, if you will, at her defense attorney in explaining a lot of the medical evidence that she believed would have been relevant if it was put forth to this jury and to this court. And to a certain degree, I agree with her. I think there were a lot of things that she mentioned during her statement which would have been relevant, not necessarily to her guilt or innocence, but certainly is relevant to whether or not this judge pronounces a sentence of probation or includes any type of jail. Now, whether it was sincere or not, it appeared to be sincere to me. It sounded from her voice, from her emotions, and the descriptions that she gave of herself and the details of what she had done for the community and many of her friends who have now suggested that she go to prison, it seemed to me that it was sincere. And whether it was an excuse or not, as a defense attorney, I'd say it was more of an explanation. But whether it's an excuse or an explanation is in the eye of the beholder. Boy, oh boy, you are good, Adam. Man, I have to tell you, I'd say on the other hand, this was nonsense. It was all excuses and, you know, more lies and insincerity. So I think you walked the line very well. Um, well done on that. Now, just taking you over to the victim impact statements, of course, you and I, we sit in court, and boy, it's yep. kind of tough, Adam, is it not? As we listen to the victims talk about how they were victimized, the effect it's had on their lives. And if you noticed in this case, Adam, you have victim impact statements that they really run the gamut of don't give her any jail judge to give her the max, Your Honor. So what do you think, how do you think the judge will evaluate those statements and what impact will they ultimately have on her sentencing? Well, first of all, when I was listening to the statements, the first thing I said to myself is, wow. I just, wow. They're so overwhelming. They're so thought out with many of the people who spoke, especially Mr. Hooker at the end, who spoke about, while we're going to forgive her, we're not going to make her pay back the money, and we hope that she learns her lesson. Then you have a lot of people who were duped in this particular situation who are saying, hey, she's got to go to jail. She's got to be punished. These are the things that we need or we desire to have happen. Now, how a judge takes this, I can tell you how a judge is supposed to take these statements, not whether or not this judge will actually take it in that manner. These are victim impact statements which should be taken very seriously by a judge. The same way you would take a defendant's statement, which, by the way, in this case, was an unsworn statement that she made, these particular statements should weigh on the judge very heavily because these are the people who were duped. These are the individuals who suffered and seem, interestingly enough, to almost blame themselves. Absolutely. Which is a very, very, that's very, very interesting to me is in this community, they're so giving, they're so willing to help their neighbor Aren't they? that when they are duped, they feel like they're somehow at fault in being duped and very introspective about it. Indeed. So, Adam, I know you're a defense attorney extraordinaire there out of Miami, but if I could turn you into a judge for 20 seconds, what is <laughs> Judge Zwickles? What is your ruling, Your Honor? What say My you as to sentencing? My ruling is she deserves to go to jail. She deserves to do some time. How much time? I've debated this back and forth. I think six months to a year would be very fair in this situation, especially since she has no priors. 
She did do a lot of good in the community. She did help a lot of people out during her non-criminal activity, if you will. She also has children, which she's fighting very, very hard to keep. She obviously was a very, very good mother. And we are talking about $16,000 here. And I've handled a lot of cases with a lot more culpability, a lot more money at stake, and even violence sometimes that's involved. And those types of things are considered, but they aren't really used to slam an individual. So I, if I was a judge in this case, I wouldn't give her more than a year, somewhere between six months and a year, followed by probation with community service hours, making her go and deal with cancer patients, people, of course, who really have cancer. Judge and, Zwickle. And I'd make her pay back the restitution, beyond a doubt. Go, Judge Zwickle. Very good job, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh